Welcome design students. In this video we're going to use Maya and Unreal Engine to create a neon sign much like this one. This is Unreal Engine and I have uh, set it up in here and set up the materials in here to get the neon effect. We're going to use Unreal Engine to render this and we're going to set up a scene to put our sign in context. Here's an example of one student's project right here. You can see that they've put some bushes and kind of created a, and put a bench here and kind of create a little courtyard scene. And here is another student project. As you can see, they've created this sort of alleyway. And so we're going to model the neon sign in Maya. We're going to put material channels on it. And then we're going to do the rest of our scene building in Unreal Engine. So let's get started. Here is the uh, completed uh, Chevrolet sign that I showed you that was rendered in Unreal. Here it is in Maya. As you can see it consists of some mesh objects that constitute the letters and the shapes of the sign and I have a reference plane, reference image plane behind it that I used to model with. So the basic technique here is that we're going to use uh, splines again. We're going to use uh, the curve tools and we're going to create some splines that are going to be our letters and other shapes that make up the sign. And then we're going to use those splines to create what are called sweep meshes. And so I'm going to demonstrate that to you in just a second. Now when you're working with splines, you should always work in an orthographic view, which is a straight on view, which would be front, top, or side. So I'm going to demonstrate, uh, you have different curve tools here. We have the CV curve tool, the EP curve tool, and the Bezier curve tool, and the pencil curve tool. You can use any of these to create your letters. I'm going to demonstrate the EP curve tool for you. Uh, when you click and then click again, you can see that um, nothing happens. Like, I'm not getting a curve here until I click that third point. Then I begin to get a curve. If I want a really tight curve, then I need to click points pretty close together. And that's how the EP curve tool works. Once you're done creating your spline, you can then edit it by right clicking and using the control vertices here and your move tool. And you can see that if they overlap like that, then they curve back on each other. So basically, when you create your letters, you're going to have to edit the curve and make sure that it's smooth and none of the points are overlapping each other. Once you get your curve created, you switch back to object mode, and then you can create the sweep mesh. To do that, you simply select the path or the spline, go to create and select sweep mesh. And then you'll create a mesh object following the path. Now after you create it, it may be very big, it may look weird, but you need to select it and then come to the Attributes Editor and select the Sweep Mesh node, and here are its settings. You can scale its profile to make it thinner or thicker. You can add precision, which gives it more segments so that it follows the curve better. You don't want to crank it all the way up over here because that gives it way too many segments. You just want to adjust it until you get just enough to smoothly follow your corners. And then you can also cap it. You're going to always want to cap it. And you can change the profile to different shapes. But we're just going to stick with poly for this project. Another interesting thing you can do here is um, you can create cords and things and cables by clicking Distribute. And then what that will do is create a bunch of copies of your line. And if I switch to uh, perspective view here, you can see that there are a number of copies here now of this line. And the number I have here is 5. I could make it 2 if I want. And then the scale and the rotate and then the coverage is how close they are together. So see I can move them closer together here. And then we can also twist them around each other a little bit, which is kind of cool. So that would be a real easy way to make a really cool like electrical cord or something like that or a cable. You 
can give it more copies. Now we have something that resembles a rope or something like that. But yeah, so you can adjust all of these things, kind of play around with them. But primarily, we're going to just be working with cap and scale profile and precision to do what we need to do. After you create a letter segment, you're also going to want to smooth it by going to Mesh Smooth. Now this mesh object here is still bound to the uh, line in the sense that I can still edit the mesh by editing the line of the original spline and that's kind of neat. To um, unparent or detach this mesh sweep mesh from the spline that we used to create it, you just need to select it and delete the history. And now it's no longer bound to the spline. So when we come back in the next video, we're going to set up our project and begin to model our neon sign. And I'll see you then.